all of my family's back home. I'm working in this corporate world, which is what I thought I really wanted to do, but I get two weeks of vacation a year. I needed something that would allow me, would give me more freedom. And so I pushed to make content and I thought that would give me the freedom. And I realized that's taken me a long time to figure out why I make content the way I do, which is so many people don't love what they do. They just say they love what they do because they have to say they love what they do. It's gonna come back to haunt a lot of creators that feeling of getting tons of views and then falling off. The feeling of getting lots of brand deals and then nothing coming in. And that feeling of, am I enough? Oliver Wright can make anything viral. He has over half a million followers across the platform. He creates content to share with the world experiments, which he considers side quests. For the next hour, we talk about creativity, feeling fulfilled and escaping the corporate world. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. And if you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Enjoy. Your message to me, I don't get a ton. I don't get really any requests to come on podcasts, which is whatever, but I do get a ton of random inbound messages. And they claim like it's a personalized message, but you can tell it's very generic with something slapped in there that they can easily just drag and drop um, from email to email or video to video. And I get it, like we're all busy. But your message was you called out the real meaning behind my content. That's taken me a long time to figure out why I make content the way I do, which is to enjoy life. You're, you, you just said you're in the corporate world. I used to be in the corporate world and I used to really, I, I loved the idea of pushing myself up through the corporate world. And I thought that was the route until you realize everyone's saying they love what they do. And for the people that do love what they do, awesome, that's fantastic. But so many people don't love what they do. They just say they love what they do because they have to say they love what they do. And you see, you see people that aren't really happy with what they're doing. Um, and I think that was a big driver for, for I wouldn't say escaping, because it's not like it's a bad place. There are so many benefits to working in corporate America, aren't they? Or corporate world. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. And uh, I actually find your content fascinating. Um, I don't have a... Thank you. I actually deleted social media a, a long time ago. Good I, choice. I yep. came to you uh, through LinkedIn. Someone liked... Uh, yeah, someone that I followed liked and commented on, on one of these things of corporate world and the content that you do. And yeah. that really resonated with me. And that's why I I thought, yeah, fuck it. Let's get him in the podcast. I, I think that would be cool. I want to discuss with him, you know, like, and things... As a creator, because you're you're aspiring creator, aren't you? I know, I know you make tons of YouTube videos. I've got comments to make about um, one in particular that I watched of doing YouTube for two years and how it changed your life. Um, but opportunities come from anywhere. I started posting on LinkedIn as a a form of sharing some of the thoughts I have, so that influencer managers, people who run partnerships at companies, could see this and start to see actually this guy thinks about content deeper than just making a video. There's there's a lot more to it, which is both a good and a bad thing. Um, but, but the opportunity to, to come in and have a chat with you, see, because I guess you're in a kind of a somewhat very similar situation, actually. You live abroad or your family's back home, you're working in the corporate world, you're trying to get out of the corporate world into being a creator. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, last one? you're 100% right. Yeah, and you seem to enjoy talking about this stuff. You you like the idea that men's health is actually super important. Yeah. Uh, Whether you look at it from the perspective of um, you need to be coddled and looked after or just do the shit that you enjoy. Yeah, that's, a, that's something interesting you mentioned, men's health and whether you need to be coddled or, or cuddled. Uh, and I want to get to that. But I want to ask you a question, actually. Um, Actually, for those who aren't familiar with you, because I hope people will watch this, uh, could you give me a two-minute introduction of who you are, what you do, and why people should listen to you? I, I moved to America for college. And at some point along the way, I realized, shit, all of my family's back home. 
I'm working in this corporate world, which is what I thought I really wanted to do, but I get two weeks of vacation a year. And after doing that for five years, I about, think about two, three years in, I realized I can't, my vacations aren't vacations. My vacation is going home, visiting family, spending time with them. And it's not your traditional hangout vacation or whatever you want to do. I needed something that would allow me, would give me more freedom. And so I pushed to make content and I thought that would give me the freedom. And I realized I was making this kind of content to please other people and to make other people think that I was this developed person. I, I would talk about the degree, I would talk about my masters, the job I have, my accomplishments. And I think back to it now, just cringing. I look at making contact now as, as how could I do something that I enjoy without trying to prove something other than proving the point of you should do what makes you happy. Uh, of course, easier said than done. So every day now, I try and do something fun that I want to do that day and that I can look back on at the end of the day and say, I'm glad I had a good day. Like, I'm glad I had fun today. It's a privileged position, but it's also a position I've worked eight years, nine years for. Uh, so I feel like I can, I can say that it's a great place to be in. Yeah. So now I make videos about trying to promote that. Uh, if something goes wrong, what's the upside to it? Where's the positive? There's always a positive and you just have to find that. I, I was actually going to ask you why you make content. So, so I, let me just say, this is probably going to be my problem that I'm so interested in finding out your, like someone else's point of view too, that I may disrupt how you, you see this going. So if you have a question to ask, say, let's, let's hold that question. We'll go for it later. No, I can, I can, reply, I can answer that question. Um, okay. The reason why I do content and I was actually discussing this, uh, with my wife and, and yeah, a friend the other day, um, the reason why I do content is because I try to do something around health and being happy and seeing the good side on bad things and yeah. the good thing, the good side on good things. And I feel like everything that's online is about making money fast or doing everything and it needs to happen now. Like, you know, like yep. if you're making content, you need to be successful in one year. Otherwise it's not your thing. In your career, yeah. you need to make moves up the ladder in two years. Otherwise, you're out, you know, yeah. things like that. And for me, I want to help people feel fulfilled. And yeah. I do that through what I can speak the most because I think I'm the most qualified on that. And it's about healthy ways of making money and living a happy life and being yeah. happy with what you decide, whether you want to live in the corporate world and you're happy doing that and you enjoy that because it gives you passion, go ahead and do it. You don't need For to sure. feel the pressure of going on social media and posting how, yeah, they leave logs that perhaps only your mom and your wife watch and then uh, feel that you're not making it because, yeah, you're actually not successful online, but you're actually b being passionate on the corporate world and outside and you find fulfillment on what the things that you do. Yeah, I... You know, we talk about fulfillment, right? And I found this quite a lot recently. So I was up until very recently, I was doing about 20 million views a month on TikTok. Just crazy to me because I developed a formula and I was, I was following this storytelling knowledge that I'd learned. But, and I, in my head, I thought, the way I was telling these stories, I was sharing about me. I was uh, being open, being honest, but I was so driven by making a video to hit a new audience every single time and for that new audience to watch it the whole way through that I forgot, I lost the reason why I switched into doing storytelling content, which was to, to share the real me who I am, not necessarily the whole idea as to why I make videos, but just I'm doing this because I enjoy it. And I also love making a video, the process of making a video. But then, oh man, 
you get into this cycle of who really are you? Have you have you heard of this term called you know, you know celebrities have like the that energy, the it factor. Yeah. Um, the person that walks into a room or a party and they're just they draw all the attention to them, not because they want to be the center of attention, but but just they have something about them that people want to be around them. Hmm. And I think every single person has that, whatever it factor that is. So when you're with your, your wife, when I'm with my wife, when you're with your friends, when I'm with my friends, you are this, you are you, the true version of you because nothing else matters. But trying to find who that is to put online when staring back at you is you in that camera, you're battling these thoughts of, am I doing this? Am I doing whatever I'm doing now because I want the person watching this video to think that I have this energy? Or am I doing it because that's truly who I am and that's what I would do off camera anyway? But I think there's there's a ton of psychology in social media that I think it's gonna come back to haunt a lot of creators that feeling of getting tons of views and then falling off. Um, the feeling of getting lots of brand deals and then nothing coming in, of people's interests changing. And that feeling of, am I enough? Um, and being able to deal with that. I, I truly think there's gonna be a massive epidemic of people really suffering from being on social media over the years. You, you men being on, on social media as in a creator or being on social media as a consumer? Oh, interesting. I think more. I think we'll find that more as a creator. The person that's putting in this work, putting themselves out there to then not have the excess and that's so easily attributable to who you are as a person. And like, if you're not bringing in the views but you think you're being in your true self, your immediate thought is people don't like me. You're not a likable person, but actually people need to get used to you. It's like when a new product or a new company comes to market, you have the early adopters, but the, the majority of people aren't jumping on that straight away. They're gonna wait until people buy it, enjoy it, hype it up, and then the masses start coming. So it's like when you try something new on social media, you've got to give it time for people to start enjoying it, uh, realizing that they enjoy it, and then maybe you'll get the success that you're potentially looking for. Do you feel that that's something that's gonna to happen to you and that's why you're saying it? Or is that something yeah. that you're afraid of? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, um, I think I, I might even go with the word afraid because this actually links back into the being in the corporate world. Uh, growing up, I, I had an amazing childhood. Where was Really that? great time. You're from uh, Britain, right? I grew up right? in England. Where? Uh, Bristol. Bristol, nice. Yeah, Bristol, yeah. Between Bristol and Bath, so like okay. Southwest England. Yeah. And I was always driven into this, you go to college, you get your degree, and then you go work in the corporate world and you just work your way up and you enjoy your life and you take your vacations and, and that's that. And which turns you into this, this person that you become the same or you become similar to everyone else around you. Because if you're that strange person, you imagine the type of person you are with your friends, with your wife. If you're that person in the office, everyone's gonna give you a weird look because that's not how you act in the corporate world, is it? You don't do the weird things. You don't spank your ass as you- Yeah, goof around. <laughs> as you walk away from your wife saying something sassy. Yeah. <laughs> And, and that develops who you are as a person. You start to become this, this, you conform to this type of person that everyone else is. I saw a video a while back. Do you know who MGK is? Machine Gun Kelly, yeah. the rapper? Yeah. The rapper, I'm not sure what you call him. But it was a video, I'm pretty sure it was a video of him on top of a table in a corporate setting. And so everyone around him at the table were all in suits, shirts, ties, etc. And he's on the table just going crazy, doing his thing. He's obviously playing his music. I don't know if he's trying to get funding. And he's going crazy. Everyone else is sat around this table, 
kind of looking at him, staring. He's going nuts. And I think about that at the time. I remember thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? And I realized he's being him. He's being who he is. He's, he's bringing his energy. And that's, that's why he is where he is. Because he's true to himself. And I, I watched this clip right before I got on a call with a lady from a brand. And she, she'd missed a couple of my emails. Um, she'd bailed on one of the calls that we were going to have. And I remember thinking, you know, I like to joke around. Let's just go into this call and be like, nice of you to finally join the call. But if I do that, yes, I'm being the true me, but do I then make her feel uncomfortable? Hmm. Because what if she's not used to that? What if she's not ready for that? Yeah. What if she doesn't have the kind of personality to, to vibe with that? And then I make her feel uncomfortable. Yeah. It's about finding the right balance, right? Because yeah, ex exactly. you need to be yourself. And your audience. Exactly. Be yourself. Yeah. Do also what you feel like doing. And then uh, also do what the audience wants to see. I mean, you developed yeah. the formula, you can make anything viral from what I've seen. Uh, from a concept, <laughs> I'd like to think so. <laughs> from a concept to just a product, a brand, anything you can think of, yeah. you make it viral. Um, is that something that brings you, gives you energy? Um, the virality of something? Yeah. It's, it's, it used to, until I realized that it's not what I thought it was. I thought going viral was like, you're making this video, everyone enjoys it, everyone's gonna love you because you're being who you think you are. But that's the, that's the super interesting thing about TikTok, in specifically TikTok, is that people see through, you can make a video that appeals to the masses, but people know that when they're watching that video, that someone's made that video intentionally with the idea of, of just reaching a lot of people. There's no, there's no connection. Here's something I, I'm starting to understand. Have you heard of a lady called Nara Smith on TikTok? No. Okay, so her and her husband, she makes a lot of things from scratch. She's like a trad wife type of thing. So that traditional home wife. And her videos just consist consistently go viral. The hook is kind of triggering, but there's something in her videos that, or something about her that people connect with. She's hit this place where she can go viral with every single video without doing anything too crazy because people, excuse my French, fuck with who she is. They like who she is. And I think the real goal for any creator, if you're trying to have any longevity online, it's to be who you really are and to have people that that will watch what you make no matter what it is. You could be peeling a potato and they'll watch because they love who you are and what you stand for. Yeah, like Casey. I think that's the goal. Casey Neistat. Yeah, okay. yeah exactly. Like she could be just uh, in the toilet or making an excursion group, getting toilet paper and people will find it fascinating. Dude, I have to, I have to ask you, you, I, from the sounds of that, you watch his daily vlogs. Yeah, not all of them, but day. mainly, yes. I don't know about yeah. It was, when that was coming out, my cousins and I, as soon as every single video came out, I was, every day it was like waiting for a Casey video to come out. I didn't know, I didn't know why I loved it that much. Um, but I just, there was something about it that I just loved watching every single day. It was non-performative, right? He wasn't, he wasn't doing anything special to make you stay for the video or to make you click. It was just a guy going about his day. Now, since then, I've realized there's a lot more to his videos. But, I mean, how much... Did you really like his videos in particular? I find them interesting i find them um, fun to watch i think that's the main yeah. it's like uh you know when you would you could binge watch his content like you yeah. could spend hours watching his content because he's a funny dude likable dude now he's even more popular everyone knows him so then 
it has that uh, factor of like finding Wally. You know, if you ever go to New York, it's like, oh, am I gonna find him? Am I gonna see him? Right. So he has Will that I as see well. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. he's going around his day just vlogging with a massive camera. Okay, no, it's a little bit smaller, but with a yeah. camera and doing his own thing. And he had a way of showing life from a different angle and yeah. not just the nice things of it, but the difficult things of it yeah. as well. And I think that it honesty. has that. Yeah, exactly. The honesty and the, the relatability. That's why I think he was a little bit, yeah, he was successful. Um, yeah. He had that likability and relatability of just being a normal dude that got himself out there. And okay, yeah, he was a unique filmmaker. Uh, yeah. But through that, that was his way of portraying himself. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I, I noticed something very recently that he said that he was going to start his vlog every day. I feel like I'm a, a Casey Glazer at the moment. Uh, he said he was going to start his vlog every single day. And he wants to, he always refers to them as movies, right? And when you start looking at it in the context of a movie, I saw a clip recently that his whole idea for each video was that this would be like a documentary of a guy in the tech world. What? So every video was like a reality TV show, except he was the main character. So the shots of like the camera set aside showing him walking somewhere or doing this, doing that, where it's, you know, it's set up, but it's as if someone else is filming. That was, that was his traditional TV or movie style of showing the character going somewhere, doing something. But that, like all of that kind of stuff just flew over my head when I was watching it every single day until I started thinking about storytelling and movie making. Yeah. Is there is there is there anyone online now that you watch uh that you that you really look forward to watching? Uh I have this one guy, Jake Fru. I don't know if you know him. Jake Fru. No, I'll yeah. I'll have a look after. He does um videos online. He was also like a software engineer. I'm always interested in people that had software uh, I don't know a corporate background, did a whole degree and eventually found creativity as an output for their day-to-day -day life. And eventually okay. were like, okay, this is not where corporate world is not where I want to go. And then they yeah. do something else and that works out. I'm always fascinated yeah. about that. But Jake Fru has a way of showing unique angles to life and okay. talking about deep concepts in kind of like a storytelling way and really a filmmaking way. He makes a, okay. he's like a skater boy that lives in a van every now and then. And he just makes videos about finding life, the simple things in life or okay. beautiful life. And then it's like a carrot and things like that. Okay. I have so many questions about that. I think I'll start with, do you take, do you watch content for the enjoyment? Since you're a creator too, do you watch it for the enjoyment or do you watch it for inspiration? Both. I have my my enjoyment moment, and that's when I watch. I think I have like a few, like for example, Kurt Kirwan. I don't know if you know him. Uh, I don't. He's like a New York City-based, uh, um, yeah, videographer that worked with like a, a gang there. Did you say Cole? Colt. C O L T. Colt. Okay, I know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, of Life of Risa as well. Um, oh yeah, I, I enjoy yeah. like those videos that are, I know that they are well produced and they yeah. are easy to watch and nice to watch. And I'm gonna, I know what I'm gonna be up to. And then I yeah. have my, I'm going on research type of mode where I just yeah. watch related, similar people to my content. Okay. And you? And what's your? Uh, uh, I'll answer. Yes, yeah, so I'll answer your question first. Then obviously I have a follow up to that. But for me. I like to use the excuse that I'm always watching for inspiration. Uh, you know, there's not, I don't, I, I think if I go to TikTok, there's there's part of me in my head that's like, I'm watching to get ideas, yeah. see how other people Research. do things. How can I? Yeah, exactly. But I'm obviously just flipping scrolling for the sake of scrolling. YouTube is, uh, I feel like there's a very different 
idea of going on YouTube, which is I'm looking for something. Yeah. Um, as opposed to I'm just going to mindlessly click and see what happens. Yeah. But I don't... I rarely finish a video, a YouTube video. Sure. Because I'll watch something, see uh, how it's done, something different, and then my mind... That, that gives me the inspiration to go and make something and pair that idea with some other idea I've had and try and merge the two or the many different things to make something new. Yeah. But then I get caught in this trap of, I hate doing the same thing again and again and again. I want to do something different every time. But I don't think as the average consumer is on social media, people don't want something different every single time. Mm. Yeah, you, you. I think you even mentioned it there. Like you with Colt's video or Life of Reza, like you like the idea of the easy watching, you knowing what to expect. Yeah. Um. But then I have okay. This is this. I think about this a lot. <laughs> Should. Do you think someone who makes just fitness content, just tech content? How authentic can you really be if that's the only thing you make content about? Because there's no way in hell that's the only thing you do in your life. Yeah. Do you think the most authentic content creators are the ones that post anything and everything to do with their life? That's a good question. Um, I think there's two sides of the coin there. You okay. have they started with nothing also right they yeah. started with doing that for fun and yep. perhaps just think of some Sulek. uh that oh, guy yeah. he posts daily vlogs of his life i can yep. assure you that fitness is the only thing he thinks of and does true on his life i never thought he's about just it. Yeah. taking you along it but then if i'm continuing thinking about the fitness people you do have like uh, I don't know, Jesse James West or something like that, that he does okay. post a little more of entertainment kind of videos. Yes, he does, yeah. So up to a certain point, I think that you have both people on this platform where you can either find the entertainment guys or you can find the I'm sharing my life people and they can be both equally successful. Dude. I love that. That's just hit me that that's so true. I was, I would, I've, up until now, I've been stuck in this mindset that actually someone who makes content in the single niche, they're not being truly authentic. True. Because there's so much else that they're not sharing. Not that you have to share everything, yeah. of course. But I wonder but wow, about yeah. vlogs, for example. People that make vlogs, uh, and that's the only thing they do. They're just yeah. being selective of what they want to share on their life, but they're sharing the life. But their niche is yeah. vlogs. That's their niche, I think. Maybe they talk yeah. about something uh, alongside productivity or alongside life in New York or whatever they're living at the moment, but they're just yeah. sharing the life and doing vlogs. Yeah. And it's those are the types of things. I think a someone who's very successful, let's let's say Emma Chamberlain. Um, people are following her because they they just care about how she does anything, and so she is she is the content. It doesn't matter what she's doing. Um, it, That's when it comes to the personal yeah. branding, right? Your yourself, you are your yeah. own niche. Yeah. And it's like trying to figure out who are you? What do you really stand for? I'm not talking about like, do you do you stand for LGBTQ? Do you stand for guns? I'm not talking about, you know, that kind of stuff. It's it's what are the personal things that really get you? Do you do you want to be there for your kids every single day? Um, or would you rather have a nanny look after the kids so that you can do the things you want in life? And you start to you question like, is that what you need to do to get to his level of success? Or is that just a personal decision that that person made, right or wrong? And you start to judge these people you see online, don't you? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. I'll tell you what's very interesting. Being a creator and doing daily vlogs and with a goal of wanting to make something each day and doing something fun each day, there are days that I just, I don't finish a video because it takes too long. And by the time four o'clock rolls around, I have to consciously make that decision. Do, do I, do I choose family time or do I choose this video? Mm. And when it comes to this video, you're always thinking, okay, but I, I told people I would get a video out every single day, but, but I don't really care about this video enough to overtake family yeah so i'm not going to i'm not going to work the extra four or five hours a day and not spend any time with my family just to get this video done that i can easily just hold it off for tomorrow there's really nothing stopping me from holding it off for tomorrow and finishing it then how did you do when you were actually still working a, a full-time job Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know how much I should actually say online about that, <laughs> but um, I I did I made content for about seven years, seven eight years with a full time job the whole time, and that was what funded making the content. That's what funded me quitting my job in November of last year and being able to sustain myself um while you know the brand deals came in and earnings and whatnot came in but i think if if i may go on a slight side quest a slight tangent <laughs> i see content creators who've made it and they they share their story of how they just quit their job opened up a credit card and it all worked out Perfect. and i think fantastic for you great but what the f are you doing telling these kids that are aspiring content creators that it's okay to just quit your job and try and do this like what if if you're if you're single and you can fall back living with your parents sure i think risk it go for it but like yourself and like me i have a wife i have kids that are depending on me as the the breadwinner since my wife's a stay-at-home wife love that decision love the nice little uh thumbs up emoji too yeah <laughs> uh, i think it's a very selfish move no. to say i'm going to pursue this thing that i want and my family are going to have to sacrifice and my family are going to have to deal with the repercussions if it didn't work out so it was incredibly important to me that i had the finances to be able to make that move make that jump yeah without affecting my family too much so you did it into a you took a healthy approach let's say not a, yeah, it works I'd out like or it doesn't work out, but you actually went for, I'm going to make it work out. It's just going to take me longer, but I'm going to make yeah. it work out the way I want it to work out, which is right. having enough money from my nine to five and eventually yeah. doing it and going yeah. full time. Yeah, it was, I always wanted, I always said to myself, I would have minimum three, three consecutive months of earning more than I was earning from my main job yep. on top of what I'd saved up because everything I made from making content, I put in its own account and I just saved that up as this pool, this fallback pool. Yep. I'll tell you, I think, not I think, the reason I quit when I did was because I started working on this huge project at the company I was working at, obviously. And the lady working on it, uh, she was a boomer older no family no kids nothing life was her work and it got to this point so i was a project manager it project manager and it got to this point in the project where we saw a ton of work coming down the pipeline and <laughs> she said oliver i need to know that you have my back what do you mean i need to know that you know when all this work comes down that you are going to be putting in the hours that we're going to be working long nights we're going to be working weekends and i stopped and i said you understand that you're asking me to give up time with my family to do work on this project and she goes yes but that that's what we do as project managers and i'm like there are three things you should be concerned with as a project manager the scope of the project the schedule of the project and the budget of the project 
if if one of those isn't fitting, so in this case, uh, the schedule, like there's a lot of work to be done in a short amount of time, we don't have the resources for it, train up more resources. Like we've got a good couple of months before this comes down the pipeline. We're project managers, we plan this stuff out. That didn't fly. And so it was either I choose to make the jump that I was just living in fear of not making, going full-time making content, or I choose this safe route, keep my steady paycheck, and just not spend the time with my family and kids. Once I thought about it that way, I was like, okay, the decision's made. And I'm not gonna, are. yeah. But I, 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 it's that fear of not knowing, but it's only because I put in the work and had the savings saved up to be able to make that jump in that moment. Otherwise, I could very easily have been stuck that I have to work these long nights and have to work these weekends. So I was in a, a privileged position, yep. but I'd worked to put myself in that privileged position. And it took eight years. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it took a long time of just trying to figure out, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing with content. Do any of us really know what we're doing with content? Like every time you, you find something that works, my well, in my case, my mind starts thinking about how can I do it differently? How can I how can I make it more fun? Yeah. How can I show more of who I am? How can I drive a different narrative that's more natural to what I want? So it's a constant evolving, and I think that is a, a pressure as a content creator. What uh, to evolve? What brings to you if I say they see? What is that about? They see. They see doing adventures in search of yourself. Oh, Daisy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I like the term whoopsie Daisy. Whoopsie Daisy. Because I think it came, where did I get that from? The movie Notting Hill. Hmm. But it was something goes wrong. And so you say, whoopsie Daisy, it's gone wrong. But whoopsie Daisy to me is a way of, does it really matter? Something's gone wrong. Oh dear. Let's figure it out. Yeah. And so, and then I was like, how can I turn DAISY into an acronym? Uh, and then I, I, I like to do some kind of adventure every single day. I call them side quests. Yeah. But by doing those things, by challenging yourself, by doing something new, hitting those troughs, getting something wrong, you figure out what it is inside yourself to be able to overcome that thing that went wrong. I'll tell you actually, the other day, I was at a sporting KC game, so a soccer game over here in the States. And I was, I'm a contracted with them to make a video, which was how much food can I get in the stadium for a hundred dollars? Now, when you make a video, you have to bring your own energy. I'm not talking about being over the top, but especially when I'm making the video for someone else that's paying, I need to deliver the same way I would deliver a project at work. But I got told off for something right when I got to the stadium and going through my, I remember sitting outside the stadium going through my head was we well, you can just do this video another time you don't need to do it now uh just wait till you're in the right headspace and it was it was that moment sat outside the stadium on my own probably looking like an absolute plonker that I was it's just like what are you afraid of what are you afraid of you can just be you brush this off does it really matter if it really matters can you deal with it two hours from now sure okay then let's go and do this thing being able to overcome those problems as just whoopsie daisies i think puts you in a much better headspace and realize that things don't really matter unless of course you quit your job and you don't have any money for your family and then they have to suffer yeah <laughs> what about, about what about yeah tell me go, carry on sorry no tell me what about you for making content? I, I, in particular, the video I mentioned, the what it was like, you know, how it's been two years on YouTube and how it's changed your life. Yeah. I have a question for you at the beginning of that video. The cinematic pieces, loved it. But, and I mean this in the best way possible, the view count does not represent the effort you put into those first few shots and how creative they were and how they line up with each other. 
it's showing the things that you have to do before you leave the house to then do the thing that you want to do for the day and talk about the thing you want to talk about. When you've made a video like that and it doesn't bring in, let's call it the recognition, it doesn't bring in what you expected from it, how does that make you feel? How do you deal with that? That's a good question. If you would have asked me one year ago, yeah, I was ready to say like shit. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, feeling like really bad, like, uh, oh, these people, people don't like me, people don't like what I do. Um, yeah. It was not until I started getting a few more comments that yeah. would say, this video motivated me, especially with the one, I, I published one of uh, quitting social media. And I got yeah. a lot of comments there of people saying this video inspired me to quit social media and people come back like a few months later and then uh, they tell me like, hey, it's been uh, two months since I quit social media. Thank you. Um, I also got a about. lot of messages on LinkedIn and that's what it was about. Like, even if I'm able to reach one person and yeah. somehow motivate them, improve the day, whatever it is to, in this case, create a YouTube channel and publish, I yeah. think my mission was successful with that video. Dude, I love that. Yes. I That's do so still good. get frustrated when my views are not high and I'm like, okay, how can I tweak a thumbnail title and everything? But yeah. overall, it becomes more, if you look at the big picture, how am I changing lives here? Uh, how yeah. this video changes a life? That's yeah. how I see it. And I think, I think that is, that's a, the mature approach to making videos. If you, as long as you enjoy the process of making that video with the intention of hoping that you can have a positive impact on one person, any person, then you can feel that level of accomplishment, right? Yeah. Cause you enjoyed the whole process and then you, you had some outcome that told you that was a positive thing you did. It was worth the effort that you put in yeah. for that video. It also has to do with, it's not my income. Like I'm not getting paid to do that. Mm -hmm. um, it's not my only source of income. So I make money from other places. Yeah. So knowing that also helps because I know that I don't depend on a single video or a brand's partnership at the moment, at least to be able yeah. to sustain myself. This is really just a creative output. Whether yeah. people like it or not, that's not up to me. I did my, my best. Um, you talk about the financial side of it. I, this is, this is like almost just stopped me in my tracks. This has been so hard for me to deal with. So you being in the corporate world, you have the steady paycheck coming in. And I've spent the majority of my life with that steady paycheck coming in. But going to a place where you have no idea how much is going to come in that month. Like, thankfully, I know how to make a video that can get lots of views on TikTok and generate a, enough income that I need for the month. But that still doesn't tell me exactly how much. And you can go from a month of making, I'm just going to throw out a crazy number, 30,000. And you could go another month of really making a hundred dollars, right? But not knowing how much money you're going to generate, are you going to generate enough to sustain the lifestyle that you live each month? No. Not knowing that is, is almost crippling. Yeah. It puts you in this place of fear of, oh gosh, I've got to figure this out because what if I don't make enough money this month versus that I think that is something to love about the corporate world. The stability is knowing effect. that, uh, yeah, like you're going to go in nine to five, you have a pretty good idea of what work you're going to do. And you know, every two weeks or at the end of the month, you know what money's coming in. Yeah. And so there's an assurity of it. So if, if you just want to spend those eight hours a day doing work and then come home and be with your family or do whatever else and not have to think about all the things you think about as a essentially a business owner, yeah. then it's amazing. But are you fulfilled with those eight hours a day? Those 40 hours a week? Some people or are. Or are you just trading? Yeah, I know. I know and that, and I, I love that. That sounds like such a patronizing way to put it. I love that people can enjoy that. I'll tell you, 
I'm going to sound like such a dick saying this. I used to think someone who was, uh, let's say, I don't know, 25, 30 plus who worked at a, a pizza hut or a fast food restaurant. Uh, I used to think, God, it, you must be unhappy with what you're doing. I didn't look down on, upon them, of course, but I was thinking, you must be unhappy with what you're doing. But then I started to realize that all of us are different. Someone could really, that's enough for them in life. That's enough to go do this job, whatever job that is, finish and go and do their thing. I'll use, a, I'll use an example of someone wants to go work at Pizza Hut for five hours a day and they wanna go home and they wanna play Halo or Call of Duty for the rest of the day. If that, if they're happy with that life and content with that life, awesome. Like that's that's great because you found something that makes you content with life. When when did you realize that actually that because uh, I had exact same thoughts uh, and I think you? I inherited them from my parents that would said like yeah, yeah you need to study hard you need to be someone and then if I would say that I would I don't know I wanted to be a personal trainer they would be like yeah you wouldn't get that much <laughs> money there and yeah. then it's like. Yeah, it, yeah, it's exactly not looking down, but it's like, how can someone working at a Pizza Hut or whatever, or Starbucks, yeah. being happy with their lives? And right. it was not until a few years ago that I started realizing, I think one or two years ago, actually, that I started realizing there's more to life than work. There's, yeah. you wouldn't work to live. We don't live to work, we work to live. And yes, whatever you do on your free time after you work, you can be earning, I don't know, just your very expenses. I'm gonna say your expenses are 500, and you're earning 1,000. Great, you have yeah. 500 to do whatever you want with your day, and with your yeah. life. When was the point that you realize that actually that there's more to life than just titles on a job? I would say, I would say now three, four years ago, working in this corporate setting. I think it's, I think it stemmed from, so this is kind of a, a longer story, but it, it kind of goes back to being in the States, waiting on my green card and just legally not able to work. Hmm. So where do I jump into this story? I spent 11 months back in the States. So I went to college in the States, met my wife, worked for a year after college. Long story short, got fired from that job for that one year visa I had after college and I had to go back to England. I literally had like two weeks to get out of the country. The company was an absolute, <laughs> the CEO of that company was a dick. Anyway, <laughs> I work in the UK for a little bit. Um, I proposed to my wife just before we left. I had this big proposal planned. I still have it planned. I haven't told her about it yet, but we will do it because we had to do a quick proposal so then we are fiancés. I went back to England, got a job, worked while I applied for a fiancé visa to get back to the States. Once I got back to the States, we got married, applied for my green card. That took 11 months. And during that time, legally, I couldn't work. I couldn't leave the country because I would then abandon my application. And I was that was, that was where I looked at social media as I kind of have to push this. Getting fired from that job made me realize I need something, I need a second stream of income. I'm sorry, this story is all over the place. That's just the way my mind works. <laughs> so then I was like, how am I gonna get a job? Because I was applying for a job throughout this whole 11 month period. And every single time I'd get through to the final stages, they were like, okay, well, do you have a green card? I was like, no, I'm waiting on it. And of course then it was, okay, well, we can't do anything until you have that. So when you have that, let's reapply. Time kept moving on and I was thinking, God, I'm not gonna be able to get a job because I've been out of work for nine, 10, 11 months now. So I started my masters. And when I signed my contract with the company, they were gonna cover my masters once I completed it and I would get a pay raise. Excuse me, <laughs> I would get a raise. When I completed it, they found a loophole to not pay for it and I didn't get a raise for it. 
And I think at that moment, I started to see how the corporate world was, that you need to have a certain mentality to push yourself up and up and up through these through this company. And I realized I didn't want to do that. The, the lack of vacation, the struggle to move up, and the fact that I just didn't want to move up, and the fact that I loved doing this thing that I did on the side, which was to make something and, and try and do something fun every day. That drove me to go harder on what I was doing. And it was when COVID came around mm. that I, I, I think, I don't know if I downloaded TikTok and I watched a few and I, this was still so early. When was, when was COVID? 2020? 2019, 2020, 2019? 2022. Bloody hell. Um, and I said to my wife, I'm going to start doing TikToks. And at the time, TikTok was a dancing app. Yeah. And my wife looked at me and she's like, okay, <laughs> what the hell are you going to do on TikTok? Because I can't dance for shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that got the ball rolling, ball rolling. Just started making something. The idea that I can make something between zero, five and 60 seconds and just put it out there. And you start developing on what you really want to do. And fast forward, we are where we are now. I love what I do. I'm in a place where I can do what I want to do every single day and provide for my family. I forget the question. <laughs> That's the most important, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the question was, you, when did you realize that there was more to job titles? Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. But I think you was, answered the question there. It was, uh, I probably answered it right at the beginning and then got lost somewhere on the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. That's, uh, what about for you though? Was that, was it the same like one or two years ago when you realized the whole pizza hut deal? <laughs> uh, I think so. I think it was. So one of the biggest dreams of my wife and I is to live in a van for a while okay. and yeah. just travel through Europe with our dog and enjoy life. That's the life, the van. yeah. And if that means working at the Starbucks uh, every now and then, working whatever odd job just to get by, yeah, be it. But at least we're making that decision. It's not that we're forced to make that decision. Right. I think it was around the time that we both discussed about that idea of living in a van and slowly yeah. started generating into, I don't, wouldn't mind working at a bar, uh, another bar, at a coffee bar, uh, Starbucks or something like, like a boutique bar, coffee, as a barista, making lattes uh, for people for four hours and then um, making content on the side and then just enjoying life in random countries, random places in the world. It was around that time. I think it was perhaps two years ago, maybe, I actually yeah. proposed to my to my wife uh, two years ago in Portugal in a, in yeah. a van. So we were sleeping nice. in a van, and the first night I just popped a ring pop, and then uh, I proposed. And then uh, nice. I think it was at that moment it was like there's more to to life than just job titles and yeah anything else. The shit that doesn't really matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm healthy. She's healthy. We're healthy. We're happy up to what I think happiness is yeah. we're happy people which is God Mary so we have that uh, endorphin uh, happiness going through our bodies nice yeah so, <laughs> life is good I have to say what do you what are your thoughts on what is financial freedom to you because is that a goal for everyone is that a goal of yours It's a really good question. And again, I think it would depend who sees it. So I'm going to answer it from my side, from my point of view, because okay. I can imagine that for someone is, uh, you know, like the fire movement, financial independence, retire early, work your yeah. ass off until you're 35 and then uh, or 40 and then just retire and do nothing for the rest of your life. But for yeah. me, financial freedom is earning money from what I think it's my best way and I'm free to do whatever decision I want to do with my own money. It's not a, if I want to go tomorrow, live in a van, I'm not, a, yeah. I'm not 
you're not worried about how you're going to afford the next yeah, meal. Exactly. I'm not worried about how I'm going to afford the next meal. And I know that for the next six months, one year, I don't need to worry about that. Yeah. In my opinion, that's financially free. But of course, yeah. it changes. Because for someone, it can be retired now and then uh, financially free, can do whatever I want. They can go move to Bali and then uh, not work for the rest of my life. I tell you, you have you heard of the term, uh, what's it called? Lifestyle creep. Yeah, lifestyle creep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is something that you see all the time in the corporate world. Yeah, lifestyle you inflation. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see someone get a new job, so they get a new car, they get a, a pay raise. And they get a bigger ha get a bigger house, and their lifestyle instead of going from expenses of four grand a month, it's now six grand, it's now ten grand, and you and to them, they're earning more money. They can afford these things, and like I'll be better off when I'm older because I'm earning more money. But they get to that age of fifty, sixty, and they realize they're earning twenty grand a month, but their expenses are fifteen grand a month at yeah. that point. It's like fuck, I can't quit like I thought I would because I don't want to change the way I live my life. And you block yourself into this place of, if you really want to do the thing you want to do, you have to downgrade your life. Yep. I'll tell you, I've got two friends that are lawyers and they, they had goals, I don't know if they still have them, of doing Airbnb properties. But I look at their lifestyle and they're spending a lot of money. This isn't a judgment on their lifestyle. Obviously, live the way you want to live. And they're spending a lot of money on, on nice things in life. Whereas my wife and I are more, we'd rather live this life that we want to live, that we're starting to live now and have f fewer things, uh, not have as nicer things like I, not that there's anything wrong with my car, but I drive a 2016 Chevy Malibu. Perfectly fine with that. I don't need a nicer, newer car. That's something that just doesn't bother me. But it's much easier to live the life you want to live if your expenses are so much lower, because then the barrier to entry into that new life is so much lower. Yeah. But you, you know, that's the... That's the hard thing about social media, isn't it? You see everyone else having all these things and you think you should have these things. So you go and get these things and then you're stuck having all these things that yeah. you didn't even want these things. Funny that you mention uh, and you bring into this topic a little of comparison. How do you stop yourself from, oh man, this, con this guy's content is better than mine or, oh, I should do that because it worked for him. So I should do it, try it myself. How do you stop yourself from doing that Dude, and from being yourself? It's a it's a really good question. I've noticed this guy recently. Um, his name is Kian, Kian Fit, I think is his name. He's a Welsh guy. And he, first of all, he's in crazy fitness creator, in crazy shape, and just makes videos, very casual videos about what he eats in a day and what he's done to work out in a day. There's nothing special about the videos but you're and every video starts with right boys and it's like three seconds and you have no idea what the video is about and on tiktok that's like a death wish for your video going to 200 view hell we'll call it but his his content you know it's not getting crazy views but the same people are coming back in the comments and you see people in those comments saying right boys or something about what he does every single day because he's just repeating the same thing every single day and he's being who he is and i look at that and i think i want that i want to just make the video the way i want to make it i don't want to have to think about some hook that's going to make someone feel something in those first three seconds and make them feel like they have to stay. But I know that if I want to go that route of, of making a video just the way I want to make it, I'm going to have to go through that long trough of people not being interested, of people not watching, as we mm. talked earlier at the beginning, so that 
you get to that point where people will, they trust you enough, they trust that you'll deliver in that video, that they're willing to wait out the beginning and invest some of their time into developing that relationship. It's it, again, it goes back to that video of yours, the two years and how YouTube changed your life. That was a long intro, cinematic intro. And people say, oh, that's a, that's a, when you make it, so Life of Rizza. Yeah. She did a, a podcast recently with a guy who breaks down. Yeah, Digital Spaghetti. Videos. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top guy. I, yeah. I love the way he, I love his energy. Yeah. And I think he, the way he was saying is like, that's a ballsy move. You've got five seconds, 15 seconds here without saying anything. But you call it a ballsy move when someone has made it and that pays off. Until such time as you make it off, people, including myself, I might look at that and say, it's the wrong way to start a video. But I want to start the video like that. Yep. Right, like, I want to do what feels natural. I want to make it the way I want to. But you need to be able to develop that trust, I think. I think you have to develop that trust with the audience and the viewers for them to to trust, to know you enough that they're, they're going to be delivered something useful. Yep. Makes sense. Which makes flipping, which then just gets you going down the rabbit hole of how do you make a piece of content people like yeah. While also making it the way you want to. <laughs> How do you make content? How do you see and then decide I'm going to make content though, I'm waxing my feet or? Yeah. So that's a, a, a good question. So I think I find a concept that is that up until recently, I went through, I was just scrolling Timu for been. AliExpress Chinese crappy product. And I'm looking at products thinking, that looks weird, that looks interesting, I've never seen that before. And so I think, if I've never seen it, I wonder how many people haven't seen it. And then I think, how can I make something interesting out of this? Would I enjoy making something interesting out of this? I made a video about how many pieces of gum can I fit in my mouth? Stupid, stupid idea. But to me, it, the question I'm I, in my head is, how can I make something like that entertaining? If I can make that entertaining, yeah, and, you can make anything you know, for people to watch. Then I can make anything. It is my way of thinking. Unfortunately, that video has something like three or four million views, and I look back at it thinking, oh, cringe at some of the things I do in that video. But like, I had fun making the video. So what the f does it matter? Right, like I, I don't care if that was yesterday, and I'm now cringing at it. Yesterday, I enjoyed making it, and I'm constantly in my head of like, why am I embarrassed by something I had fun making, and has actually performed well too? Because I, I shouldn't care. We shouldn't care about what someone else thinks, but we do. Right, we do, and that's that's the hardest thing. Do you think that's the social approval that we seek for as a human beings? Because yeah. even in the corporate world, you do something and you seek for approval of someone, whether it's uh, you change jobs and you seek approval of your friends and uh, family, yeah. even on LinkedIn or whatever, to making a piece of content and seeking for approval, whether it's in terms of views, likes, engagement. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, are you, do you guys, not that necessarily that I'm asking, are you planning on having kids, but the idea of kids? Eventually. I don't yeah. have kids, but eventually we would like to have yeah. kids. <laughs> well, when the time comes, I hope you bloody enjoy it as much as I do. It's amazing. But where we, I, I knew I wanted to go onto the kids topic, making a video for fun and having someone, because we, we went onto the topic of doing it for the approval of others. Oh man, I completely forget where I was going with that. But real, I, I think coming to this idea that someone can watch you do something, two minutes later, they don't remember it. Yeah. They've moved on. They're far too wor more. They're far more worried about themselves than they are who you are. Yep. Yeah. 
who are selfish I'll and tell you, Yeah. I had this this crazy epiphany at the end of a video I shot um, two days ago. I mentioned that I really, when I was going to shoot at the Sporting KC game, that I really struggled with getting over the fact that I'd just gotten in trouble. How do I get back into this mindset that I want to make this video and I want to have fun doing it? Yeah. And filming in public, oh my gosh. I always told myself that I hate filming in public because I don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable. Because like I'm used to filming in public. Uh, sorry, I'm used to filming myself. Yep. My wife hates filming herself. Absolutely hates it. We're like opposites when it comes to posting content online. She thinks what I do is kind of weird, mm. like posting the personal bits. Yep. Not that she puts me down. She's very supportive with it. But filming in public... I hate doing and I've always used the excuse that it's someone else that I'm not I'm doing it to not make someone else uncomfortable but actually it's because I'm fearful of someone judging me for doing it hmm. thinking that I'm weird and when I was filming at this sporting KC game I was literally walking around the inside of the stadium I'm walking past hordes of people especially at halftime and I've got the camera up in front of my face and it's not a small bloody camera <laughs> but I realized this at the end of the day because I was there for work, it gave me this mentality that I was meant to be there. Yeah. I was getting paid to do it. I was, a, I was a professional. I was just doing my work. And that made me feel comfortable. And I was thinking, if I can just get myself into that mindset that I'm meant to be doing it, I'm meant to be there, then I can get over doing uh, filming in front of people and that kind of insecurity of doing that. Yeah it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm now going to film straight in someone else's face. Like I'll do it where it doesn't make someone else uncomfortable. It's but about trying to overcome those hurdles. It's about what's being social, socially acceptable, right? Because yeah, for example, if you are there for work and then you're filming the event and you're filming people's reaction and no one cares if they point a camera at their face, but if yeah. you're just vlogging it's a little bit less well seen if you could say it it's a little bit less yeah. popular and more maybe for all millennials and send g send gen seers that's yeah. a little bit more acceptable but then old boomers gen x up it's like yeah. what is this guy doing yeah do you have permission to film me yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's um yeah it's, it's considered a very strange thing to do and i get it but when you see someone in face on FaceTime in public, that's socially acceptable. That's that's socially acceptable, especially if they're with the speakers. I, I remember exactly. taking the bus uh, years ago, and then people with their head not no no with headphones, but blasting music from their speakers, and that's, everyone would yeah. stare at them. But now, if you're speaking yeah. on the phone with a FaceTime on the bus, okay, sure, okay, you're a little bit rude. You're not putting your headphones on, but. No one really cares, and they even want to listen to that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, especially if there's something juicy yeah. going on, <laughs> dude. This is a, this is the thing. I, my wife and her family, FaceTime for anything and everything. If it's just yep. a single question with a yes or no answer, it's FaceTime. Same, my and wife. She'll yeah, same. Yeah, same. <laughs> uh, we got. Are you sure you're not married to the same person? <laughs> I don't have kids. And yeah, that's true. That's true. And. I remember saying to her, I was like, that's quite invasive in public, don't you think? And to her, it was, it doesn't matter. Like, I've got my own thing going on. I want to have my conversation. And she is, she's not a, um, an inconsiderate person. She's not a selfish person. But to her, she was just talking with her family on the phone. And no one else, no one else mattered yeah. as to how she had that conversation. Why can't I have more of that when I make flipping videos? Why can't I have that mindset? Um, but it's the, I think if I circle it back, it's the small realizations in life, like me realizing if I just change my mindset to think that I'm doing this for work and that I should be doing this, I can get in a much better mental space to then get to a point where it becomes second nature to me. It becomes natural that I don't care about other people's opinions as I film yeah. outside in public and I just get more comfortable being who I am. Makes sense. Yeah. What do you, cause uh, I, you know, you film parts in public too. Do you feel 
it seems it seems so bad to ask you if you feel this insecurity but i think everyone feels some level of insecurity of filming in public like like i do have that um i'm more scared i think at the beginning it felt worse so yeah. i did it less and as i started growing and getting more subscribers it started being a little bit more acceptable for okay. myself and I know where yeah. I want to get and what I want to do with my life to be recording yeah. in public. I mean, if I'm going sightseeing, people are there with their cameras and right. recording everything, but why can I not main, make m the mundane life a little bit more fun, a little bit more touristic, yeah. let's say. Interesting. Just even going for a, a walk yeah. with my dog. I made a video of walking and I asked my girlfriend yeah. to film because that's a little bit less strange than putting a tripod, then yeah. walking, then uh, going back, running, yeah. grabbing the tripod, walking around and going again right. another place. Especially if it's full of people, people just stare and then you feel the stares you looking at you and yeah. judging. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I have to ask you this too. I went to, I was doing another video for sporting, yeah. well, for the MLS actually. And there was this uh, tailgating section outside. So lots of different events going on, lots of people there. And I was like, I, I probably need to get some shots here. And the guy I was with, I was telling him, I was like, look, I feel so uncomfortable setting up the camera and getting these shots. It's like, I am not someone who likes being the center of attention. Yeah. And he looked at me and he said that, I would never have guessed that because someone who makes videos and posts them online, you'd think that they want to be the center of attention. It's funny that you mentioned that. Are you, you're an, I can think you're somehow of an introvert. I... Are you? I find that everyone that it's online, it's more of an introvert than an extrovert. Oh, you think so? I do Why, think so. What, what gives you that idea? Why do you think people, people online are more introverted? Because one, you need the time to do content and extrovert people are yeah. busy doing okay. extrovert things. And two, I've just seen way too many people that feel more comfortable talking to themselves and talking to a, a camera than talking to someone else on the oh. streets outside. That's, um, I can see that, I can see that. But then you have like the, we'll call them the Hollywood, LA type influencers. And for the most part, they're out there. Yeah. They're the extroverts. Yeah. Um, but I think there's, I think there's, I was having a chat with my barber a while back about, she was going through some things. And at the time I was doing, uh, we'll call it the Sam Sulik type vlogging of just you turn the camera on and just whatever comes out, comes out. Yeah. Which I don't know if you've ever done that, but that is like extremely therapeutic. <laughs> just just saying out loud what's on your mind, just thinking through these thoughts you have. Where do they go? Where do they take you? What do they mean? Yeah. I started to understand a hell of a lot about myself, even if you don't post them. Just stick the camera down, do whatever you're going to do and just start thinking out loud because we don't do that, do we? We don't, no. we don't take the time and the way people live lives these days, we don't stop to collect our thoughts and think about the things that we're doing. No, indeed. It's funny that you say that because you are someone that is into men's health. Yeah. Do you consider to be con yeah. <laughs> your on, men's sorry. health to be more beauty type of health or mental men's health or how do you find the balance if you want to do both yeah uh it's the men's health thing came as an afterthought actually so i think it's very important to do when i got to this mindset of it's very important to do the things you want to do that make you happy I did that, dude, getting 20 million views a month for, you know, a, a number of months in a row, every videos, you know, between one and 10 million views. 
I'm thinking to myself, dude, the brand deals are going to come rolling in. All of these brands are going to want this because it's a sure shot. All they have to do is pay the money and they know their video is going to do well. Zero. Zero. I even had a manager at the time. He couldn't get anything. But since then, I think also he was just a crappy manager because since then, I've been able to bring in quite a few deals hmm. doing it my own way. And I have no experience pitching brands and whatnot. Anyway, um, I started to think about my content of how does it fit into some type of niche? Because as, as much as I think I don't really need to be in a niche, companies, these brands, they don't think that way. They think about, okay, we've got a tech product, so we need to hit tech influencers. Yep. Uh, or beauty, beauty influencers, etc. And so I started trying to position where does my content fit in this in one of these realms. And I was like, men's health, not necessarily just the beauty side of it, but how can I show other men that it's okay to do the shit that is normally not okay? Like putting my feet on camera, I don't think. That was a flipping hurdle I had to come overcome in my own head of like, I shouldn't put my feet online. That's a weird thing to put my feet online. But I also have these dry cracking feet that I know tons of other guys have dry cracking feet. Again, excuse my French, fuck it. I want to make a video about this. I have a real problem to solve and I can get their brand deals out of it from a company that everyone was suggesting to me in the comments when I did a different series. So like this works perfectly. So that's where the kind of men's health was born from of how do I, how do I fit into some type of niche so a brand can feel like they're making the right decision? No. Yeah. But since then I've realized actually, and I don't think brands realize this at the moment, these companies don't realize, the niche doesn't really matter that much. They should be targeting the demographics the age group, the gender, the location. Yeah. I think that's what they should be targeting instead of making sure they hit a tech market, depending on the product. What about what about for you? Do you think about niche? Do you, do you want to stay in your niche? Do you think about the brand side of it? I do think about the niche as in, I need to speak about yeah. something. And the more and smaller I mention it and position it somewhere, the easier it will be to hit a certain demographic, okay. I feel like. Um, before I was just making, I think I went from everything, from saying I was in self, always self-development related, but I went through business, I went through consultancy related, As I we went do. through... Yeah. Uh, yeah, just trying to explore life. I think it was not until what a few months ago that I was like, I'm just gonna commit to yeah. this. Because I got quite demotivated when I would do a video about yeah. let's say money and I wouldn't get the views I would expect yeah. at the beginning. So then I was like, okay, this is not my niche. Even though I'm qualified for this, this is yeah. not my thing. But then I was like, okay, but how can I make it my thing? Why Why do I stop if I don't get the yeah. social approval? Somewhere out there is going to like it. Someone out there wants to hear yeah. what I have to say. So now I just position a mentality rather than a niche. If you want to say it's a niche, sure, it's self-improvement and personal yeah. finance. That's my niche. But I think it's more about trying to live a healthy, yeah. fulfilled life and wealthy, a wealthy, fulfilled, yeah. happy life. That's how I see it. Just finding that balance between having enough money to do what yeah. makes you happy and feeling fulfilled and happy with what you do. That's how I do see you feel, it. Do you feel that your viewers feel that? Uh, I surely hope so. Probably not. Probably a lot of my viewers came from my either social media video or my, I did a one year being a minimalist, yeah. for example. And then I think a lot of views got from there. Um, I somehow try to steer away from it, but I do try to share a message and everything that I say, it's about taking your time, taking your time uh, and spreading mental health yeah. awareness. 
especially when I was not myself in a good mental state. That's what I tried to do, and this was my way of yeah. coping with that. I hope, and I think that quite of my viewers see it, of taking that healthy approach to life, whether it's owning less stuff or it's quitting your social media, you're taking an intentional approach and you're being intentional of the things that you want to yeah. do with your life. Yeah. So I do think that they do see it that way, I hope. That's, but that's the tough thing, isn't it? You, in your mind, you're pushing this agenda, but it's, it's hard to know. Like I've, until yesterday, actually, I got this message from a guy that was asking about what it's like to move to the US. And in our conversation, he just added, I think you're quite a wholesome guy showing his life in the US, which I 100% agreed and I love your style and then some other bits but that was like fuck yes i'm i'm i i'm not trying to push someone to live a certain way but i want to share the way that i see things the way i do things and that's what i want someone to follow for yep i don't want someone to follow because i i did something cool or i can do something cool i want them to follow because they like the way I live life and they're inspired by the way I live life that they, cause I, this is the crazy thing. When you have kids, I tr I truly believe that I am doing life the best way I can because I'm doing it for my kids. I want my kids to grow up to be the best humans they can possibly be. If I'm doing something wrong or I could do it better, I want to know and I want to do it better. But as long as my main focus is, can I be the best dad to make my kids the best kids? I want that to show through. For me. I want people to see that. And that, that, and I always questioned, I was questioned, like, do people see it that way? Do people, but getting that message is one of those external fulfillment type of things that I shouldn't need. But I do also kind of do yeah. do also kind of need, and it's so nice to hear. At the end of the day, I think that's what you do it for, right? You want to change someone's life, yeah, on the positive way. And getting yeah. this text is surely the affirmation, reaffirmation right. that you need as a creator to know. Okay, I'm doing things right. Yeah, of all the things I'm doing, this one this one's a good thing, and people notice it too. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you have to love that. Indeed. And it's nice to see that. But uh, I, I know we're kind of almost at time, but I don't know if you mind me saying one thing. I think the way some things in life are said, this, this, is, this is such an in-detail, minute thing to think about, but I think it makes so much difference in the grand scheme of things. So when someone says to you, oh, I really like your trousers, the, uh, the the uh, the normal person thinks oh cool like my trousers are nice i look good but the the actual message isn't you look really good in your trousers it's i i like your trousers yeah versus dude you look so good in those trousers right now now it's about you and your choice that you made to put on those trousers and how you've dressed up the rest of your outfit to make you feel that way. And you have made that decision that actually what someone else is saying affirms what I thought when I put these trousers on. And so we were thinking about that with our kids and my wife said, instead of us saying, dude, you did an amazing job with this, saying, how do you think this went? How do you feel about what you've done? Now he's a two-year-old. You can probably string about four or five words together <laughs> with about a second pause between each words. But you're starting to develop. Now he he's learning to, to figure out his own emotion about how he felt about it versus being told, you did a good job because I think you did a good job. right? But I think it's the small things. The same message comes across, but there's a very different underlying thought process behind it. I think. I think so as well. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I have a, a question okay. to end this podcast. Uh, <clears throat> what's one piece of advice you received that stuck with you 
um, that you would like to share with the audience or anyone watching? Nobody cares about you. They have their own stuff to worry about. So stop thinking about what other people think about what you're doing because they just don't care. And in the most, in the nicest way possible, I know that's a very dark thing to say. No one does fucking care. Do you care about the guy you saw fall over today? Yeah, you might tell the story about him, but you don't care about how he felt after that, do you? Like, it's just a story. Yep. I think I think that was actually from Casey too in an interview. It was like, nobody fucking cares. That's true. And those are uh, <laughs> wise words to end, I think. Where yeah, can uh, people find you? Uh, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. It's odd, right? So O-D-D-W-R-I-G-H-T. And those are just my initials. Thank but you, I've had a great time. It's been a great chat. Yeah, man. I appreciate I love you having, having you. me on. I'll, uh, I really enjoy the conversation, and I think we have a lot in common, actually. Uh, surprisingly, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny how these things work, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, indeed. I was uh, a little bit <laughs> nervous because it was my first recorded conversation with someone that I actually yeah. knew just from content and from yeah. doing some research, but not really knew. Uh, yeah. And it's great to see that there's nice people out there, you know? Cool. I appreciate that. How do you how do you feel being nervous going into it? How do you feel at the now? I think YouTube helps with being comfortable on camera. Um, yeah. It helps also that I did coaching courses. Okay. Because I find it interesting and I, I, I thought that that's where I wanted to go with my life. Turns out yeah. it's not, but it comes in handy <laughs> now when I but do you need to make from questions. It. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, also doing public presentations or work presentations, all of those things help to go into a conversation, even if it's unprepared. Uh, yeah. And have a conversation out of nothing to yeah. bring on something and learn. Cause yeah, it's like even if this didn't like feel natural and you come out, what's the worst thing that can happen? You wasted an hour and a half. Yeah, and That's I got to niche. share knowledge and hear great stories with what I think it's an amazing human being. And oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're so welcome. This is not going <laughs> to be on cool. the podcast, by the way. It's going to be God after the... Oh, you're not going to put that on? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Dude, 